Hey, I know that a lot of people out there watching this channel, watching this video, or even subscribe to this channel want to become a financial advisor. And I want to give you the 10 things that I think you can start doing today to help you do that. Get the pen and paper out. Hey there, everybody. Dominique Henderson. And you know I'm often asked, Dominique, what do I need to do to become a financial advisor? Is there like a list of things that I can do? Uh, kind of. Of course, there's a list of things you can do, but there are going to be some things that you don't necessarily like about that list. But I've kind of boiled it down to at least 10 things that you can start doing today that will help you along that path to becoming a financial advisor. One quick disclaimer, because I know that my audience is composed of career changers and recent graduates from uh, school and people that are still in school. So I totally get where you may be. And for that reason, I've had to generalize the list a little bit. It can't be too custom for any particular group, but these are things that all those groups, no matter where you are, have in common on the 10 things that you can start to do. So number one is research. If you've been watching me for a while, you know doing your homework and doing your research is always gonna be the first thing that I talk about. And why is that? Well, because there's so many different roles. There's all the different, you know, financial advisor roles that you can have, no matter if you're, you know, kind of front-facing client, rainmaker type of people bringing business in the door, or if you're more of a support um, analyst or a paraplanner or associate advisor that helps put together the plans, and maybe you're the second uh, person, you know, not the person necessarily talking always in those client meetings, but you are the person that's kind of in the room, or you got those people that are just in the back office doing back office admin, and maybe you're putting together numbers and things of that nature. That's in a, just a financial services firm. Then you may decide, like I said earlier, become a financial coach where you're not really giving investment advice. Um, you can also just be an investment advisor, or you can be an analyst. There's so many different titles, and there's so many different roles you can play. You first need to figure out which one do you think is most suited for you? And after you figure that out, then you can start to look at, you know, what firms um, and what are people hiring for? What's more popular? Um, you know, and what are those firms, you know, maybe where are they geographically? So those are the things that you'll need to do first. And it all is in the bucket of research. You can also join a professional organization. That's tip number two. You want to, you know, look at the Financial Planning Association or, you know, NAFA, the National Association for Personal Financial uh, advisors, you know, there's different organizations and they have different levels of membership and they usually have a local chapter. So these are all, you know, organizations you can become a part of to start to network with some of the, what are, what are called mo maybe movers and shakers in the industry and try to glean from them what's going on, you know, what things you need to be apprised of and things of that nature. Usually those organizations are also going to have networking events or when they bring in outside speakers, um, industry speakers that talk about different things that are relevant in the industry. All really great information for you to know and to be up to date on. Tip number three, you can join a study group. Now, what is a study group? This is going to be a group of your peers, probably five, no more than 10 people at a time that are going over maybe things that you guys have similar, right? Maybe I was in a study group before and we were all kind of new entrepreneurs. So we were always sharing wins and losses and best practices about how to get our business up and running. Now there's different study groups for different types of areas in the business, no matter where you are. It's all about plugging into those local chapters like NAPFA and FPA that help you find those areas. Um, and then you can go from there. The thing is, iron sharpens iron, right? So you want to be able to bounce ideas and get different perspectives from um, um, a body of your peers. And you do that in a more intimate setting in a study group. Hey, real quickly, if this is being helpful for you, this checklist, leave me a comment down below. I would love to know. Let's get on to number four. Number four is to find a mentor. And I know you're probably saying, Dominique, this is not the easiest thing to do. These guys and gals are not hiding in plain sight. <laughs> and I know that it's for a reason because a uh, mentor's time and their knowledge is going to be invaluable to you on your path or the progression that you're making to becoming a financial professional. That's why I've linked up in the cards a video on how to approach that type of person so that you can be best positioned to find that mentor that you need. Tip number five is to prime your online presence. Now, what do I mean by that? People are going to be looking at you online way before they meet you in person, more than likely, especially in the day and time that we're in. So your social profiles like LinkedIn, especially that has 250 million active monthly users, 
is going to be a, a primary way for people to see you before they see you. However, I have also done a video on how to get an all-star LinkedIn profile. I've gotten over 10,000 followers using these tips and tactics that I'm going to give you. So I'm going to link that up in the cards. Make sure you check it out. But you've got to make sure you prime your profile for being able to be seen and to be able to be set apart from all of the other people that are trying to get what you're getting, which is that job as a financial professional. Now, this comes a little later down the line, and I would not advise this for everybody coming right out of school before experience, but pursue a designation. Why do I say that? Well, because this is a very competitive industry. And at last count, we've got something like 84,000 CFPs, and then there's other designations. CFP just happens to be that standard by which the public is looking at a professional that is able and capable to handle their finances. But there's other ones out there, and you may want to pursue those. I think that you have to think about it from this standpoint. The public eye is on this, this profession. There is some scrutiny around it. And as you're setting yourself apart with a designation that means something to the public eye, that's going to help you out. It's not going to just help you from um, what you may think are the tangible things. It's also going to help you from an intangible standpoint with the confidence that you need in order to move around in this industry. A lot of your peers are going to be working hard. They're going to be working late hours. And while you're chilling, you know, you got somebody else that's really studying to become the next whatever. So make sure you continue to sharpen your skills and keep your skills sharp by pursuing designations or maybe even furthering your education to the degree that it helps you progress along this path. Tip number seven is to network with peers. Now, I've talked about the study group. I've talked about joining an organization. And those are all parts of networking. I totally get it. But there's different ways to network, right? If you're in a big room full of 100 or 500 people, maybe you get a few business cards and you make some really have some really substantive conversations. In a study group, that's a little bit more intimate, but it's still a group setting. You're not going to be able to talk for 15 or 20 or 30 minutes even, depending on the number of people there. However, if you did a one-on-one -on -one with a peer in the industry, invited them to lunch, invited them to coffee, you know, things of that nature where you can talk shop and you can talk about the different things in the industry, maybe some of the things that you're struggling with, you know, things of that nature. It's more one-on-one -on -one accountability, and that's going to really take you to the next level. As long as it's someone you can trust, you can get their perspective on where you're going, maybe some of the blind spots that they see on your path. And this doesn't necessarily be, have to be somebody that is older or more experienced than you. This can be one of your peers, um, but they are just able to see things from a different perspective. So definitely network with your peers. Tip number eight is to attend an industry event. Now, I haven't always been a big proponent of these, but if you're going to go with an intent, you're going intentionally to do you know, XYZ activity or meet with XYZ amount of people, that's where you would go. Don't go for just the sake of attending just to say you went to you know, whatever the event's name. Go there with a purpose in mind. If you know what the speaker's gonna be, uh, the set of speakers or the agenda's gonna be, maybe you want some CE credit. You know, These are always gonna be good opportunities for you to gain more industry knowledge and to share some experiences and share some knowledge with other industry professionals and get a bead on industry news, right? So those are the type of things that you can do at industry events. Tip number nine is to reach out to potential employers. Tip number eight and tip number nine, I think, go together. Because if you're at industry events, you're going to start to you know, notice who the hiring people are. They're going to see you. But reaching out to potential employers, I think, can be done so many different ways because let's just be honest. None of these people are going to really walk up to you and tap you on the shoulder. Right? You're going to have to reach out to them. Whether you do it via email or video, video is what I prefer. Um, I think there's some really cool things you can do. I'm going to link a, a video up in the cards to give you my three tips on exactly how to approach a person that has a, a job opportunity for you or a career opportunity and how you can set yourself apart from all the other people that are clamoring for that particular job. Whew, now we made it to tip number 10. And what do you think it's going to be? It's almost kind of coming full circle. Hustle, right? I told you at the beginning to research, do your homework, and you've got to hustle, man. You've got to really want this. And, and what I would say is maybe wake up an hour earlier and go to bed an hour or uh, an hour later. This is a real simple way just to get two hours back that most people are not going to be doing anything. And if you can be moving the needle while other people are sleeping, then all the more better for you. 
I just think that the amount of hustle and the amount of grit is by far that X factor that's going to move you ahead of the competition when you're looking for a job or you're looking for an opportunity as a financial professional. Now that was all my 10 tips. I definitely have more than that. However, if you like a copy of this one, make sure you comment down below checklist and I'll get it right over to you because I want you to be set up for success when you're walking down this career path to become a financial professional.